Hi guys and welcome to my new gameplay video. This is the first uh, game I'm gonna play. It's called Mobius Empire Rising. It's a action slash adventure slash mystery game. Uh, lots of slushes over there. But I've heard a lot of good about this game. And um, some people like it, some people don't. So I decided to test it myself, try it and pass it if I can. I try to complete the game as soon as I can with as little uh, videos as I can not to make it the series uh, too long but the game um, to me looks rather good um, has uh, some um, good functionalities um, because I've seen um, just some of the game uh, just to see how it looks like and stuff like this uh, before the video before I make this video so just to just to see if it's worth it and stuff like this. For me, it's worth it. Uh, it's for, worth a try. It's also worth uh, passing it to see the end of the storyline. So I think it's it's a good game. Also, it's a mystery game, which uh, uh, which is one of my best uh, types. It's my one of my favorites. Uh, I like mystery games. I like to solve puzzles in the games, and and uh, these will be the games pretty much you will see on my on my channel. Uh, being the mystery games or RPG games, I like RPG and, and mystery adventure games, stuff like this. So, um, this one is the first game, as I said. This one was developed in 2014, so it was last year. And um, it was developed by Pinkerton Road, which you can see here. And that's pretty much it about my introduction to the game. I'll show you one thing before I start the game, I'll show you one thing, which is introduction to the story of the game. And the introduction is basically a comic um, um, style introduction. And if you click the first option in the menu, you have a comic book, which is basically uh, the story before the game started. And I already read that through, so if you want to read it, just stop the video. I'll show you all the text and pictures. Stop the video and then read it through there's more pictures over here there you go you can read that through there's the next page you can stop read that through as well it's quite interesting if you ask me it's uh, also very good to know the, the introduction to the story if you want to um, know the game very well there we go next page and more pictures and text some more some more okay and next page Not everything is in English, as I can see already. <laughs> Although I think the game should be in English, I've chosen English language. And you can choose different languages as well. Okay, so that's it. So that's the whole story before um, the game starts. Now I'll start the game and there will be a, um, a cutscene of some sort and I won't speak towards this because I want you just to see it and watch it. So let's start.
Okay. Um, the song playing there was quite nice. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Alright, so we have a lot of things going on right now. And I have some kind of prescription pills. And this is probably my inventory. Well, uh, selecting an item in your inventory will cause it to... I will make a... Um, where is this thing? Yeah, I'll take this sound a bit down. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, what was it? Uh, tutorial. Uh, selecting an item in your inventory will cause it to become your active item and show up in your inventory tab. The eye enters uh, examination mode, the magnifying glass enters uh, interaction mode, and the bag enters combined mode. So the eye is to, My wallet. to check the information about the stuff. This one, this one is to interact, um, but I cannot do anything. And this one is to combine, but I cannot combine anything, okay. Alright, um, and this one is also some kind of menu, um, I have main menu, um, with settings, save game and stuff like this, alright, um, my phone I believe, yeah, there it is, um, my phone, I have a keypad, contacts, messages, notes wait what is this um this is the hint system if you enter this will turn on the hints for you in game now no i won't enter and i don't want to use hints i try to pass this game without hints if possible i cannot do anything with this one so i'll try to to play this game without any hints and and if possible i won't use them at all um, but if I'll need to, if I'm stuck for a long time, I'll probably use hints. Anyway, let's um, let's start the game play. the doctor say lots of bruising but there's no permanent damage don't fuss malachi you were in the hospital in spain for a week a man who evaluates antiques for a living should not have to worry about getting beaten by thugs the chest senor perez was trying to sell was a fake it's hardly my fault he took my evaluation badly you need to take security on these jobs some of these sellers are dangerous people and you excel at pushing people's buttons i'm honest and that's precisely why my clients hire me. Is there any urgent business? I have a few things to fill you in on. Let me know when you've had a chance to settle in. Okay, how to play? <clears throat> Let's see. Um, okay, that's a cursor, a talk, talk icon, um, operate icon, when an object or person can be interacted with. Okay, so it will show some kind of label. Um, the eye to look at things, uh, hand icon to pick up stuff, and the uh, inventory icon means it, item can be used from the inventory. Uh, inventory, click on the top upper icon to access the inventory. Uh, okay, click the icon to say, oh, oh, I've been through this already. In game menu bar. Alright, so this one is menu bar, I know that. Phone and uh, map and hotspot icon will display hotspot and label uh, labels in the current area you can also press spacebar to show these um, and this one is in-game menu also displays the current chapter and your score so apparently i have some some kind of score to meet or to achieve um all right what do we have well we can look around uh, the objects in those security boxes are especially valuable gretchen gets them down if a serious buyer is interested all right, some cabinets, some horse. A gilded Jerome figurine, quite rare. Good for you. Um, a suitcase. Oh, I can take something out of it. I'll take my passport with me. Oh, I took the passport. 
Uh, nothing else, I can just look at it. So, is there anything else? Screen, screen. Is what? there anything in the alcove that urgently needs my appraisal? Not at the moment, no. Okay, so nothing here. No, that's a screen. Um, storefront, nothing. Black cabinet, nothing. Antiques, nothing. I can, I can just look at them. Um, exit to the office. Okay. Uh, masks. Dogon masks right. from Molly. Okay, some kind of masks, paintings, nothing useful. Nothing useful. Desk. Oh, I can operate something here. A letter. Operate. It's a letter from Mr. Barosi, an antique dealer in Venice. He has a brilliant eye for interesting pieces. He's a little quaint. He insists on sending snail mail. Mm, I can just I'd look like at to it. see what Barosi's found. Perhaps I'll be passing through Venice sometime soon. It's kind of hard to read. I cannot make it closer. Um, but I'll try to read it. And um, I hope this letter finds you and your shop is shop in good health and good fortune. Uh, recently, a unique uh, figurine has come into my hands, which I think will be of interest to you. Though I may not. Um, oh shit! I cannot see. Uh, certain. Uh, though I'm, uh, yeah, though I'm not certain of its origin, I believe it may be Celtic. I hope you are able to come by the next time you are in Venice uh, to look, to take a look. I'll keep it as uh, set aside for the time being. It's kind of hard to read because I didn't set my uh, graphics of this game. Seems to be all the newspapers can talk about these days my graphics of this game to the highest setting because I'm playing on the laptop yeah, he's taking a pill I'm playing on the laptop and I don't want to stress my laptop too much it's not a newest laptop but also it's a laptop and on laptops games are not uh, going very good in par I didn't buy it for gaming much although I am using it for gaming right now I plan to buy a desktop better than, than the laptop I have but desktop even if it was a worst computer than I have right now it's still better at cooling it down this one gets hot when gaming that's why I didn't choose the highest setting possible but when possible if you on video probably won't see stuff I'll just read it to you um, no thank you no thank you okay um, there's nothing in here anymore let's talk to this woman Maybe she has something to say. Interesting. Gretchen, or whatever her name was. We should catch up on what's been going on while I was away. Let's do it. Upcoming contract. So what's the next assignment? You just got here. You probably haven't even been to your penthouse yet. That wasn't the question. <sighs> Fine. There's a supposedly undiscovered Rembrandt in Rome for Sotheby's, and two pieces in Egypt for Rutherford's. Take them both. Malika, you just got out of the hospital. You should let your body rest, at least long enough to get used to a time zone. With the economy in the gutter, there are a lot of desperate people right now. Desperate enough to sell Grandma's Harrington, or create a good forgery. I might as well make the money while I can. You're driving yourself too hard. Your body needs... What my body needs is no concern of yours. No. Thanks for reminding me. There was also a new client who called. Something about a government contract. Alright. <clears throat> Mr. Douchebag, ask about the security. You said in your email that you've been looking into security options? I made a list of the reputable security agencies in New York. You should have a bodyguard travel with you. With the money you earn on these assignments, you can afford it. No, they'd only get in the way and be tiresome. I prefer to travel alone. Fine. There are other options. Mm -hmm. What other options do you have for security? What other options do you have for security? I've been researching security agencies in various international cities. I can set someone up when you travel. Have them meet you at the airport. I can't trust someone I've just met. How could I be sure they weren't already bought off? These are reputable agencies. You have to get over your trust issues. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, 
yeah, still you lets us come out to security. Ideas about security. I have a report on where to buy guns in various countries. It's not a very good option, but it's better than going into a bad situation unarmed. And maybe the mere presence of a gun will remind you not to shoot off your mouth. Gretchen. Uh, I mean, give your fascinating opinion quite so freely. All right. Maybe we'll try that next time. All right. Mm, next time. Who is this new kind? Amble Dexter, 452 Central Park West. He wouldn't say what it was about, just that he needed someone with your expertise. If he wouldn't even say what it's about, then it's not worth my time following up. Well, it is a very upscale address, but do as you please. All right, new map location. That's all fine. Very well. Goodbye, new map location. Mm, I have some kind of thing here. Nothing. That's extremely odd. Hmm. It's an unusual name, but there's information on everyone on the internet, unless it was intentionally scrubbed. All right, so there's no information on the internet for this guy, apparently. Whoever he might be, I don't know. Um, there's a map here, and can I use it then? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come on. Okay, so this is where I am. This is the client, the new client. Let's go there. I have nothing else to do. All right. He doesn't look like the type I can manipulate. He wants to see my passport. He wants to see my passport. Okay, um, that's how you give the passport, I think. Here's my passport. Welcome, Mr. Rector. You can go through to Mr. Dexter's office. Use the elevator, sir. Okay. Fita. Thank you. FITA. Some kind of secret organization. Ah, Although not Mr. very secret. Rector, what a pleasure to finally meet you. I've heard about your remarkable talents. Which I presume you'd like to rent in the near future. Precisely. Please, come in and sit down. This is Mr. Reichardt, my associate. Mr. Rector? Hello. Before we discuss the job that we have in mind, I hope you won't object to a simple exercise. Oh? I'm afraid I left my performing monkey hat at home. Please don't take it like that. I think as a historian, you'll find it quite fascinating. I'll think about it. Okay. Look at this logo thing. It smells like secret organization, but not so secret. I don't know. Mm, flag. F FITA flag. I, I wonder what the FITA stands for. Some pictures. Of someone. I don't know what. Who? Not what. Alright. Um, what's this? Uh, okay. Um, analysis. Um, okay, so I can analyze the person. I'm... Wait, what does it say? Malachi can analyze objects and people to learn about them. <clears throat> Each icon highlights a point of interest. Click on one of um, click on one to see the and uh, data point and select from the list of possible deductions based on what Mac, uh, Malachi sees. Okay, so this guy is. Um, let's start from here. Sharp gaze and. Um, he has to be intelligent because he's some kind of in some kind of organization so maybe this one then uh, steady hand and um, if it's steady hand and calm reader probably so if he is the leader uh, of this organization then runs agency from wheelchair well it's obviously very not ill maybe disabled uh, Sympathy seeker, I don't think so. Maybe highly determined. Click finish after making all of your choices to see Macaulay's final analysis. Okay. Dexter is a highly intelligent and determined man. He appears to be an effective leader. That's the analysis. And what about this guy? Okay, so I cannot analyze this guy Dexter right now. Dexter is the man in charge. I'll address myself to him. So I cannot talk to this guy though. Nah. Amble Dexter. He appears to run this place. Whatever 
this place is. Yeah, whatever this place is. Who knows? Nothing on the desk. Go away. Okay, let's talk to him. Um, a simple exercise. What is thing. this exercise you mentioned? Take a look at this man. Tell me if he reminds you of any specific person in history. I read objects, not people. And this exercise is illogical. Humor me, please. I've heard you have a photographic memory and that your knowledge of history is beyond compare. I'm intrigued. Oh shit, don't sugar it. Okay, let's have a look. I'm not sure what Dexter hopes to gain from this exercise, but I am curious. If you are curious, then let's do this. I prefer to work on my phone. I'll scan in the man's bio. Okay. Project Detail, um, FITA, Manhattan, New York, client, um, background, Giuseppe Monserrato, a young Italian painter and architect, a promising talent, he died a few years ago when his career was only just beginning. Tough luck, man. See, uh, see if the life of Giuseppe Monserrato uh, actually, he's not Monserrato, Montes, Montessero, my Italian is shit. Anyway, Montessero uh, resembles that of any historical figures. Okay, and these are his data points. And Giuseppe was a talented Italian artist from a young age. And Giuseppe became quite a visionary in the field of architecture his research and work formed the basis for much of today's environmental friendly or green building design giuseppe was hired by vatican to implement his green uh, designs on a new building and uh, giuseppe was known to have many female lovers and was engaged for five years to a woman he didn't love so he had many lovers, but he was engaged to someone he didn't love, <laughs> what the hell. Uh, they were never married and the um, engagement ended when she died. Uh, tough luck again. Giuseppe helped manage his father's um, business in his early teens and surprisingly excelled at it. Um, Though respected by his uh, peers, uh, Giuseppe did not rise to any great fame or renown uh, in his uh, lifetime, partly due to his early death at the age of 36. Giuseppe had many friends and clients in the church who supported his work. Okay, and there is a button analyze. Let's analyze. Okay, Giuseppe and tutorial scan through the list and remove candidates who don't match. Uh, very many data points. Use the button to remove a candidate. Narrow candidates down to three people who match the most data points. Okay, so we search the most who has the same points as here. I already read the points, so there's no point to reading them. I'll just check the pictures, and the less pictures there is, the, the less points they have, right? Mm. So, this guy has only two, so probably not. What else? This guy. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So no. But this guy I, I couldn't see. So this one is also out. And this guy only two from what I saw. If you think your candidate is not a good match, I need to eliminate them consideration. I mean, yeah, I already know that. And one more. One, two, three, four. Four, but one, two, five. These are five. These are six. And okay, so this one is off. All right. So I have three suspects. Let's call it. I have three um, historical figures. Now I have to compare his bio with theirs, probably, and yeah? review the data points in the grid. Then select the picture of the candidate you think is the best match. Use the select button to confirm. Okay, Giuseppe was a talented Italian artist from a young age. Many of his work were passed off as his masters when he was in training. Um, so basically he was a talent as well. Um, um I believe. Um, 
Michael, uh, Michelangelo was an apprentice. He was paid as a master artist, and Raphael was um, apprenticed at the age of eight because of the promise he showed. Well, all of them were talented. Okay, the next one. Mm, right. Mm. Giuseppe became quite a visionary in the field of architecture. Okay, so, so the green thing here, yeah, right. Mm, no data points. Um, design tombs, chapels, and libraries that are considered turning points in the architecture history. His work was one of the uh, direct inspiration for the um, Menaris movement. His, uh, that was um, Michelangelo, and this one is Raphael. Now his work is in architecture. He, his work in architecture heavily influenced the end of the Renaissance and the start of the Baroque period. Next one, Giuseppe was hired by the Vatican to implement his uh, green design on a new building. So Botticelli, no data again. Hired um, Michelangelo hired as an architect to design Dome of Saint. St. Peter's uh, Basilica after Raphael's death. So Raphael was first to be architect, then this guy because the Raphael died, okay? Um, so we know both of them were working on it. Um, Giuseppe was known to have many female lovers and was engaged for five years to one when he didn't love, which is weird in my opinion. They were never married <clears throat> and the engagement ended when she died. Um, Botticelli um, never wed and expressed strong aversion to the idea but su suffered from an unrequited love for a married noblewoman. He was buried at her feet at his request. Uh, Michelangelo, he never married and may have had a number of homosexual <laughs> relationships with younger artists and models. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, and Raphael was once engaged, but his fiance died after a six year and uh, that's pretty much similar to, to the Giuseppe. He made many paintings of at least one of his uh, longtime lovers. Hmm. Uh, Margaret, Margarita Lutti, she was called. Giuseppe helped, uh, helped manage his father's um, business in his early teens and surprisingly excelled at, that, at it. Um, Potticelli, uh, or originally trained as a goldsmith by his brother, he made apprentice by age 14, and a number of his early uh, works were attributed to his master Fra Filippo Lippi, rather than to Potticelli. Um, no data for Michelangelo and Raphael. At the age of 11, he helped manage his father's workshop and business improved. So if you ask me, these, these pretty much are the same. It's teens and, and his father as well. Right? I, already, I think I already know the answer. And though, because most of Raphael's points are pretty much the same as these guys. Uh, Giuseppe's. Um, but let me finish in. Uh, though respected by his peers, um, Giuseppe did not rise to any great fame or renown in his lifetime. Because he died early in 30, uh, when he was 36. Um, though he received work from popes in his lifetime, his fame was elapsed by later Renaissance artists from uh, his death. For at least uh, a century following his. Okay. So, but this yellow, I think, actually is not uh, the guy we are looking for. It's between now Michael, Angelo, and Raphael. I can tell you that much. I, I think I already know the answer. And uh, now, Michael Angelo hailed as the greatest artist of his time and lived to be 89. So, that's not really the same. It's, it's like twice. Um, held in high regard by his contemporaries and had a trick of success cut short by his death at 37 so pretty much similar uh, Giuseppe had many friends and clients in the church who supported his work uh, one of the artists commissioned to work on the painting in the Sistine I don't really need to read that though Sistine Chapel including Temptation of Christ Christ um, I don't think I need to read this one this guy's uh, bio doesn't really match these guys uh, but but the CLD bio is, is really different than Giuseppe's 
Uh, now Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel architect for St. Peter's uh, Basilica. His Pieta sits inside the Vatican and reconstructed the facade of the Basilica San Lorenzo in Florence and painted the Last Judgment in Sistine Chapel among other famous work commissioned by the church. And this one invented the Rome, uh, Raphael, invented the Rome by Pope. Julius II to paint his invited, sorry, not invented there. Uh, his private library was an architect for St. Peter's Basilica, painted the school of uh, Athens and other works in what are now called the Raphael, Raphael's Rooms in the Palace of the Vatican. And that's it. Now, I already know the answer because most of the points that correspond to this guy are very really similar to Raphael. That's that's why I think. And I will select Raphael. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, so it's solved. Uh, yeah, Giuseppe Montesa Montesero. Life is nearly identical, much to that of Raphael. Yeah, it's pretty much. It was pretty much, you know, similar. Okay, so exit. Is this a joke not at all? What do you see? His biography reads like that of Raffaello Sanzio d'Albino, the 15th century painter better known as Raphael. You do not disappoint, Mr. Rector. Such a pleasure to finally meet you. Truly, I'm delighted. Wonderful. Now perhaps we can discuss the job you have for me. Okay, so let's ask about the exercise. I still don't see the point of that exercise. A modern man happens to have a similar life story to a famous painter. What of it? Indeed. Its relevancy to us needn't concern you. All we ask for is your expertise in making the historical connection. Let's talk about the job. Do you have a job for me, Mr. Dexter, or not? I do. The job is in Venice. A young woman of wealth and high birth was murdered there a week ago. Her name was Bianca Cardolo. I'd like you to go to Venice and investigate who she was and do what you just did so magnificently. See if she reminds you of any historical person. That is all. I don't investigate deaths. I'm a detective. We're not looking for her killer. Only the facts of her life. A brief biography, if you will. And for you to document any connections you draw to any figure in history. Perhaps there will be none. That's acceptable as well. You get paid twenty to thirty thousand for your work for the auction houses. I'll pay you fifty. It should take you no more than a week. What say you, Mr. Rector? Oh, for fifty grand? I'll take it. I might be interested. But first I want to know why you're keen on this particular woman and what the point is behind these comparisons to people in history. I'm afraid any further information is classified at a high security level. Yeah, obviously, always highest security level. You cannot take, you cannot ask about anything. Obviously, I'll, I'll take the job. I have I'll nothing else job. to do anyway. Excellent. I know you won't disappoint me, Mr. Rector. Speak to the guard in the lobby. He'll give you your plane tickets and Godspeed. I very much look forward to hearing your report when you return from Venice. I'll forward the relevant information about Bianca Cardolo to your phone. Very well. Goodbye. Mm, okay. So I got the first case kind of thing. First mystery, I think. Pass through the scanner, sir. Pass through the scanner, sir. I have three kilograms of TNT on me. Can you do anything to it? <laughs> Go talk to him. The way he walks is strange. Mr. Dexter said you have plane tickets for me? Yes, sir. All right, I so have I have... trip, sir. I have the Thank plane you. tickets. Um, so now what's left to do is go to Venice. Looks like but I'll... care of everything here. I should head to the airport for my trip to Venice. All right. Um, so I took care of everything, and now I'm ready to go to Venice. So I'll cut this video here, this will be the first part of the series. And the next part I'll go to Venice and, and explore stuff over there. And because the video is, I think, 
already 30 minutes and so half an hour uh, I don't want to make it any longer so I'll cut it here this will be the first part and in the second part will be the continuation so thanks guys for watching tune in for more uh, of my videos of my gameplays and how the story develops you will see in new episodes and um, subscribe and like the, the, the channel the videos uh, if you like them, give it a like. If you, if you subscribe, you'll get new videos and uh, information uh, whenever they come out. So it's always good to have if you are interested. And I'll see you in my next gameplay video and bye!